Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Bloody Mary. In the quaint town of Elmwood, nestled among rolling hills and sprawling fields, the old Wilkins house stood abandoned, a relic of a bygone era. Its dark windows and overgrown garden contributed to the local children's tales of hauntings and horrors, especially the legend of Bloody Mary, the spirit said to appear in a mirror when her name was chanted three times. On a dare, a group of high school friends decided to test the myth on the night of Halloween, seeking a thrill that only the forbidden could provide. Uh, among them was Ava, a skeptic who dismissed the supernatural as mere superstition. She joined her friends, Jake, Mia, and Tyler, at the house as dusk painted the sky in shades of orange and purple. The house creaked with the sighs of age as they entered, their flashlights casting eerie shadows on the peeling wallpaper and dusty floors. The air was thick with the must of abandonment, and each step on the rickety floorboards echoed like whispers through the empty rooms. Let's do it in the upstairs bathroom, Tyler suggested, leading the way with a mix of excitement and apprehension. That's where she's seen most often. They climbed the staircase, which moaned under their weight, reaching a narrow hallway lined with doors. The third door on the left swung open with a nudge, revealing a small bathroom cloaked in tiles, stained with time. The centerpiece was a large, dusty mirror above a cracked sink, the silver backing speckled with age. This is it, Mia said, her voice a mix of fear and fascination. Who's going first? The group decided to chant together. They stood before the mirror, the beams of their flashlights converging on the glass, creating a halo of light that seemed to pierce the darkness. Taking a collective breath, they began the incantation, their voices low but clear. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. The words hung heavy in the air, and for a moment, nothing happened. The wind outside picked up, sending a chill through the broken window, rustling the curtains with ghostly fingers. Suddenly, the temperature dropped, their breath visible in the air as they exhaled. The mirror's surface seemed to swirl subtly, the speckles and smudges distorting as if something was moving behind the glass. Ava, heart pounding, leaned closer. Did you guys see that? She whispered, her skepticism faltering. Before anyone could answer, a vague silhouette appeared in the mirror, a dark smudge that grew clearer, forming the figure of a woman. Her face was sorrowful, her eyes hollow pools of black, and where her mouth should have been, there was only a blurred line. The figure raised a hand, pressing it against the glass, the fingertips leaving streaks of what looked like blood. Tyler stumbled backward, knocking over a bottle of ancient perfume, which shattered on the tile floor, its long-forgotten scent mixing with the musty air. We need to leave, he stammered, his earlier bravado gone. But as they turned to exit, the door slammed shut with violent force, the sound echoing through the house like a gunshot. They tried the handle, but it wouldn't budge, as if gripped by an unseen force. The mirror behind them cracked, a single line fracturing the glass. Blood started to seep from the crack, dripping into the sink with a slow, persistent tap, tap, tap. Ava turned back to the mirror, her eyes wide with terror, as the figure in the mirror began to whisper her voice a serpentine hiss that filled the room. Stay. The lights flickered, and the house groaned as if settling deeper into its foundations. The legend of Bloody Mary was not just a story, it was their reality now, and the night had only just begun. As the room grew colder, the blood seeping from the mirror's crack began to pool faster, forming a small crimson puddle on the white porcelain of the sink. The whispering grew louder, a chorus of voices that seemed to echo from within the walls themselves. Stay, stay, they hissed, their tone mournful yet menacing. Mia clutched her arms around herself, shivering. What does she want from us? She whimpered, her eyes fixed on the mirror where the figure of Bloody Mary became more defined, more terrifyingly real with each passing second. We need to break the mirror, Jake suggested, his voice shaky but determined. It's the source of her power. We break it. Maybe we break the curse. Ava, despite her fear, nodded. It was a plan, 
at least something they could try in their desperation. She picked up the largest shard of broken perfume bottle from the floor. On three, she said, her voice steadier than she felt. One, two, three. Together, they hurled whatever they could find at the mirror. More perfume bottles, a rusty razor blade, even a small ceramic toothbrush holder. The mirror webbed with cracks under the assault, each impact a shockwave that seemed to shake the very air around them. But as the final blow struck, the room plunged into darkness, their flashlights flickering out one by one, as if snuffed by an unseen breath. They were left in pitch blackness, the only sound the dripping of blood and the whisper of voices chanting, Stay! Panic set in as they huddled together, trying to restart their flashlights. Only Tyler's flickered back to life, casting a weak, trembling beam across the room. The mirror was now a spider web of cracks, but Bloody Mary's figure still loomed within it, her face twisted in rage, or perhaps agony. Why won't she go away? Tyler cried, his voice echoing off the tile. Suddenly, a loud bang sounded against the door, followed by another and another. Someone or something was slamming against it from the outside. Each thud was a shockwave of fear that coursed through their bodies. Is someone trying to help us? Mia asked a small thread of hope in her voice. No, that's not help, Ava said, her gut tightening. That's her trying to get in. The banging grew more frantic, more desperate. The door's old wood creaked and groaned under the assault, splinters beginning to fly off its surface. They backed away, knowing that the barrier between them and what lay beyond was about to break. We need to find another way out, Jake said, trying to sound brave. There's got to be another way. They scrambled touching the cold, damp walls with trembling hands, searching for a secret passage, a hidden door, anything. Meanwhile, the figure in the mirror began to push through the shattered glass, her blood-covered hands reaching out into the real world. As they searched the walls, the air grew thick with the scent of iron and mold, and the temperature dropped even further, their breath now visible as they panted in fear. The voices grew louder, a cacophony that threatened to overwhelm their senses. Just as they felt they could bear no more, Ava's hand brushed against something different, a lever hidden behind a loose tile. She pulled it without hesitation, and a section of the wall swung open silently, revealing a dark, narrow passage. Without a second thought, they dove into the passage, the wall closing behind them with a thud that muted the chaos of the room they left behind. Ahead of them lay only darkness and the unknown, but behind them, was certain doom. As they stumbled forward, the light from Tyler's dying flashlight, the only guide, they knew their escape was far from secure, and the night was far from over. The narrow passage was cramped and damp, the walls pressing close as if they could collapse at any moment. The air was stale, heavy with the scent of earth and decay. Their single flickering light cast long, dancing shadows that played tricks on their eyes, making them flinch at imagined movements just beyond the beam's reach. As they hurried along, the passage began to slope downward, leading them deeper into the bowels of the old house. The ground beneath their feet became slick with moisture, causing them to slip and slide, each step precarious. The echo of their own movements seemed to chase them, a constant reminder that they were not truly alone. Suddenly, Tyler's flashlight sputtered and died, plunging them into darkness. Panic surged as they stopped in their tracks, the oppressive blackness enveloping them. We can't stop, Jake hissed, his voice shaking. We have to keep moving. Feeling their way forward blindly, they relied on touch and the sounds of each other's breathing to stay together. The passage twisted and turned, a labyrinthine descent into fear. Just as they thought it might never end, they emerged into a larger underground chamber that faintly smelled of salt and seawater. Ava, leading the way, stumbled over something on the ground. She crouched, her hands searching until they touched cold, wet stone, stones that were regularly shaped and arranged in a circle. Her fingers traced the outline, realizing they had found an old well, long sealed and forgotten. The faint sound of water dripping echoed up from the depths, a reminder of the unseen depths below. As they gathered around the well, trying to discern any feature that could aid their escape, 
The faint, far-off sound of a chant began to drift through the chamber. The words were indistinct, but the tone was unmistakably that of the Bloody Mary ritual, warped and distorted, as if through a great distance, or from another time. The chanting? It's following us, Mia whispered, terror tightening her voice. They realized with horror that the entity was not just confined to the mirror or the house. It was a part of the land itself, woven into the fabric of the place. The chanting grew louder, more insistent. A cold gust of wind surged through the chamber, extinguishing the small light from Ava's phone, which had been their last source of illumination. In the pitch black, they heard the sound of scraping stone. The sealed well they had discovered was slowly opening from within, the cover moving aside with a grating sound of stone on stone. Terrified, but transfixed, they listened as something began to ascend from the well, the sound of dripping water growing louder, accompanied by a soft, squelching noise of something wet dragging itself upward. The air grew colder, a palpable presence filling the chamber. As the entity drew nearer, the first visible sign was a reflection, a faint ghostly glow emanating from the well, not enough to see by, but enough to cast horrifying shadows on the chamber walls. Then, with a sudden silence that was somehow more terrifying than the noises, everything stopped. The silence stretched, oppressive and thick. Suddenly, a cold, wet hand grasped Ava's ankle. She screamed, the sound reverberating off the stone walls as she felt the grip tighten. Another hand emerged, grabbing Mia's leg, pulling with unnatural strength. Jake and Tyler tried to pull their friends free, but the strength of the unseen assailant was overwhelming. In the struggle, a new light began to emerge from the well, not ghostly this time, but red, like the coals of a fire. It illuminated the chamber just enough to reveal the face of Bloody Mary herself, her eyes hollow and soulless, her mouth twisted into an eternal scream. She rose further, her form slick and covered in the dark waters of the well, her hands locked around their ankles. The realization dawned on them all at once. They were not going to escape. The legend was not just a story, it was a curse, and they had walked right into its heart. As they were dragged towards the well, the last thing they saw was Bloody Mary's face, coming closer, her scream mingling with theirs as the darkness swallowed them whole, pulling them down into the abyss of the well. The chamber fell silent once more, the ritual complete, waiting for the next unwary souls to awaken the horror of Bloody Mary.